really work, Chuck, but they have to take a, they have to run around the church every time you want to take a deep breath. Seems to me a bit excessive. Okay, I have another plan then. And okay. we'll use you as the example. Now, right. take a very deep breath, but only through your nose. Okay. Okay. Now, as you're doing this, sense where that air is going. Okay, now tell me where that air, we'll let it out, of course. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> tell, tell me where that air went. Yes, well, it went everywhere, in, in the chest, in the rib cage, and in, in your back. It just seems to expand everywhere. So this is what we found when we ran around the church. We had that same feeling, those very, the huff and puff of breathing. That air had to go everywhere. You needed so much air that it filled every possible corner. So why don't I just take it in through my mouth? Why we'll do I have to do it know. through the nose? How is that it's different? A little, it's a little different. I guess maybe I was just pulling it in here, and it wasn't filling up the complete. Why, why is that? Why is it different? Well, let's ask Dr. Wizard. Okay, that happens to be me. <laughs> oh, wow. <well. laughs> I was setting you up, because I wanted to answer that question, you see? <laughs> when you breathe in through the mouth, the air is, is colder than it is when you breathe through the nose. It warms the air so that the body accepts it better. So we almost have to train the body to take a deep breath when you don't need the air, through the mouth, which is going to be cooler, and fill up the complete uh, lung system. Great. Well, let's take another look here at our little breathing lesson we did. This is a very natural procedure. Breathing is something we do all the time. We have to. When we're breathing specifically to begin the sound on an instrument, especially a brass instrument, we have to take a very smooth inhalation and a very, not a, not a rigid, stiff <laughs> In other words, the inhalation that you give is going to give a nice, relaxed, pleasant attack as well. David has a very physical approach to, to uh, taking a very deep breath, and it's quite unique. Let's, let's take a look how he handles it. I think it's rather interesting. I'm glad it's physical. Look down your horns and stand up now. We're going to try these two exercises. The first one goes like this. The first one is meant to uh, help you to inhale properly. Now, when you, when you inhale, you want to get in a full breath, but to help you uh, exercise these inhalation muscles a little more, we want to add some resistance. So we're going to put the back of your hand up to your mouth and inhale like this. And pull it away and let, that, let the air rush in. Okay, ready? Right, let's do it again. Okay, out. The air goes out. Ready? Here we go. Uh -oh. Okay, got the smokers in here. You'll know it right away. Okay, let's do it once more, and then we'll try the other one. Ready? The air out. Here we go. Now, you can feel like you can get a full breath in there. Okay, now we're going to uh, exercise the exhalation muscles, which are the ones that you use to blow the instrument, the air through the instrument. Um, that one involves simply pushing out a lot of air fast, but you want to uh, uh, do something that's going to help you to, to uh, tense your stomach and push that, that air out, which is to push your hands together. Let me, let me show you, I'll give you an example. We're gonna, I'm going to do three in a row. So you take breaths like this. Ready? Let's try it. Ready? Good. It's a lot of air moving, and that's the whole purpose of it. That's good. Now, David brings up a point that is, is very interesting, and I think we should continue the dialogue. And this is about blowing the air out. Now, this can vary with the type of instrument that you play. Trumpet players are going to have a different approach to trombone players to tuba players because the, of the velocity. Now, let's get a little bit technical, but I think it's important. The, the smaller the embouchure, this is the embouchure, of course, and that's where the mouthpiece fits. But the smaller the embouchure, the more pressure will be behind that stream of air that comes out. So that means the blowing is actually the same, but it's going to feel different when, you're, when, you're, when the body builds up a lot of pressure and the air comes out stronger. So uh, when you're pushing the air out, that applies possibly to the smaller mouthpieces. The larger mouthpieces, you have the largest, so maybe you want to talk to us how, how you blow the air. And blowing the air is, I think, a very important word. You blow the air in these instruments. Very simple. Well, it's true. It's simply stated the trumpet 
uses the greatest pressure and the least quantity of air, whereas the tuba uses the greatest quantity and the least pressure. So you have a reverse situation. For us to blow with that kind of strength that David just suggested, on the tuba you'd only be able to sustain a note one or two beats. The air would, would just be gone. So we use very little push or tension from what traditionally we call the diaphragm, although that's another conversation of what we call the diaphragm, what we're actually using, our stomach muscles. But to propel that air with a tuba, it's more of a total uh, mus musculature action rather than just from one single place. And I think the higher instruments do develop a great deal more pressure. To of pressure. And, I, and this is all, uh, it's, it's really dictated by the instrument. A tuba player putting a trumpet mouthpiece to his lips really approaches the blowing process exactly the same, but automatically the pressure will have to increase because of the narrowness of the mouthpiece. And I think I've restated what you said, but maybe with the idea of just the size of the mouthpiece alone, it's very easy to see that this difference will take place. Trying to, to funnel that air into a large mouthpiece or funneling that air into a smaller mouthpiece the funnel itself, in this case the mouthpiece, will predict the, the amount of pressure that's behind that. To summarize this whole business of breathing, <laughs> we'd, we'd like to, uh, first of all, talk about a few techniques that they can practice on their own, and then the, the main points that, that are most important mm -hmm. in breathing. Okay. So you want to start? Well, okay. The first thing about breathing that we should remember is that when we take a breath, we want a total breath. We want to use all of our lung potential. And to do this, we, we think of the breath as being top to bottom, side to side, front to back. There's a lot of space to fill up, and we want to, in fact, fill that space. And secondly, we want to do so by reminding ourselves what this large breath will feel like. The idea that Gene suggested, breathing through the nose, this is something we can do once a day, ten times a day, just to remember that feeling. And sound is very important, right? The mm -hmm. sound of the breath, it gives us a clue as to whether we're breathing correctly or not. Yeah, I know you've heard a lot of people breathe, they go, <laughs> or <laughs> whatever, mm -hmm. but this is wrong. It should sound hollow, and, and the, you'll feel the coolness of the air on the back of your throat. So this is what it sounds like when I do it. And don't forget, while you're younger, you can actually expand your lung capacity. So it's even more helpful later. Probably not a bad time to talk just a little bit about general health, because the idea of expanding your lung capacity, a sport such as swimming, swimming is definitely the best exercise that someone can, can take part in, because you're using all of these muscles in the, the act of swimming, and you can develop, uh, in an extra musical way, you can develop something that becomes very useful, a direct usefulness in playing the brass instrument. Okay, being a brass player is like being an athlete. You really have to keep in good shape. And, uh, <laughs> that's true, because we're traveling around all the time. We're on the road. We don't get good exercise. That is incredible. <laughs> I didn't know. Hey. Right. <laughs> we'll come back. They're going to do 473 push-ups, and we'll just have a little, maybe we should play a little. Look at that. I don't believe it. One, two, three. <laughs> Okay. So I think if you start looking at each other when you're playing with other people in band or in, in a quintet like ours, start thinking about posture, reviewing the idea of a full breath on your own at any time of the day or night, you can remind yourself of what this feels like you can start to get very comfortable with these concepts, and they will become not only second nature, it really will become a very good habit. So this really ends our, our section on breathing and posture, and we encourage you to go forward now when we discuss the more technical side of brass playing, the, the embouchure and tonguing. So we hope to see you in the next part. And buzzing the mouth, please. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs>